Hi online family, Maddie here. We're here at church getting ready for Sunday and I'm so excited that you're a part of this message. We're a church that loves God, loves people and loves life. And I'm praying that this message is gonna speak to you, it's gonna inspire you and uplift you in your journey in life. So why don't you go ahead and share it with someone in your world and let's be all a part of what God is doing together. If you got your Bibles, why don't you open with me to Psalm 8. Everybody say it's Psalm 8. I'm excited to preach the word this morning. Psalm 8, I'm going to start in verse 3. And this is what it says if you don't have a Bible with you, that's between you and God. Just kidding. It'll be on the wall behind me. Here we go. Verse 3 When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place. What is man that you are mindful of him? And the son of man that you care for him? Yet you have made him, everybody say made him, a little lower than the heavenly beings and crowned him with glory and honor. You have given him dominion over the works of your hands. You have put all things under his feet, all sheep and oxen, and also the beasts of the field, the birds of heaven, heavens, and the fish of the sea, whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name. I want to start a brand new collection of messages called Purpose today. If you're a note taker, a journaler, I really pray of all the messages that maybe you might take notes for today, this might be one that you decide to do it because... I believe this is an important message for everyone to hear today, but I want to talk about purpose. There's a strong sense in our world today for a variety of different reasons, which we'll talk about, but there's a sense of maybe a lack of purpose. But if you look across the, the, the cross section of society of you know, many different demographics, many different ages, that there's a sense of maybe a loss of purpose or maybe a a lack of purpose, people maybe seem a little bit like there's a lack of direction. Um, I even had this thought that maybe you might be in here today and you might feel like you've lost your purpose. Or that you, maybe your purpose has been maybe taken from you. The enemy's trying to tell you that you no longer have a purpose. And so the burden for these messages is that maybe for you, you would rediscover and unearth all over again the purpose that God has for you. We're going to be talking about purpose. And I believe it comes at a time when people are wondering today, those age-old questions, what's my purpose? You ever ask this question, what am I supposed to do with my life? What am I here for? What's my purpose? So we're going to be looking at this, we're going to be looking at what the Scripture says, and we're going to be answering some of these questions, because again, I believe we're living in a time, in an era post-pandemic, post a lot of things. It's almost like we're post-post things. We're post-technology, we're post all these things, but we're living in time where we're seeing this across all generations. We're seeing this need for this question to be answered and it's kind of confirmed all over again to me this week as I was studying and I was reading of a, a social report that came out. It was pretty widespread. A lot of people would have seen it but I delved into it and it was quite in depth and there were different areas where it was, there was a, a sort of a, the scope was from 2011 to 2021, so included obviously the pandemic, but it was across different areas as it relates to youth, young people, high school age. And I was very interested in this study because for me, when you look at high school age people, that also gives you a sense of what young people, maybe in the college age are going through, but also younger than high school, so middle school as well. And this study was alarming, to say the least, about where our society is at when it comes to something like purpose. More than four in 10, this study said 42% of students, so this age, high school, felt persistently sad or hopeless, the study said. Use the word hopeless. And nearly one third experienced poor mental health in 2021. In 2021, almost 60% of female students experienced persistent feelings of sadness 
or hopelessness during the past year, and nearly 25% had made a plan to take their own life. And we're seeing this so much in mental health, especially amongst young people. And this is what I believe it all boils down to, is that there's a lack of hopelessness. Like the study actually uses the word hopelessness. And the reason there's a lack of hopelessness is because people have lost a hold of hope. And the way that you have hope is you understand that you have a purpose in life. And the summation of all this really comes down to what I'm doing right now, what I believe that you and I need to do, which is as Christians, tell as many people as possible that God has a purpose for their life. And that they're not a mistake. And that their life isn't, isn't a waste of space and time. And you're not just here for whatever, but God actually has a purpose for you. And so we're going to be doing that. We're going to be talking about it. And we're going to be, I believe, in the middle of it, purpose is going to begin to flood back into people's lives. And maybe in the next few weeks, you can invite someone to church that maybe is experiencing some of those things. And I believe that God is going to do something powerful in their lives. I remember being 19, 20 years of age around that time and just after I'd just said yes to Jesus and being in a church like this and and hearing for the first time that I was called, I was saved and I was called and that God actually had a purpose for me, that God actually had something unique and specific that he had for my life. And I remember hearing that for the first time and things just opening up in a whole new way and just being like, wow, wow. This is incredible. Could it be that there's a God in heaven that loves me, that created me, that, 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 that loves me so much that he actually created me with a purpose in life? And I began a journey, and I believe everyone can be on this journey of discovering purpose. So let's get into it. We love the Bible here at Colonial Church. If you're new, you're going to find that out very quick. So I've got a few verses for us. Here's Exodus 9 and verse 16. But look at how much purpose is mentioned in these scriptures. But for this purpose, I have raised you up. This is God speaking to Pharaoh. To show you my power so that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. Job 42 and verse 2, Job says this. He says, I know you can do all things and that no purpose of yours can be thwarted. Psalm 57 and verse 2, the psalmist says, I cry out to God most high. To God who fulfills his purpose for me. And Proverbs 16 and verse 4 says, The Lord has made everything. Did you know that everything has a purpose? That God has made everything in such a way that it has a a purpose attached to it. He says, The Lord has made everything for his purpose, even the wicked for the day of trouble. And Jesus, speaking of his earthly life and his ministry, his time here on earth, look at what he said in verse, uh, Luke chapter 4 and verse 43. He said, but he said to them about his ministry, about what he was called to do. He said, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to other towns as well. I was sent for this purpose. So how do we discover purpose? How do we grab a hold of it? How do we understand it? What do we have to know about it? Well, point number one is this. When it comes to purpose, number one, you've got to believe you have a purpose. And this is my appeal today. This is my pleading today. This is my hope today is that I could get you to a place where you believe that you actually have a purpose, that God actually has given a purpose to you for your life and for my life. The reality is God has designed you with purpose in mind. I'd love it if you could write that down. I was created with purpose in mind. Proverbs 20 and verse 5 says, the purpose in a man's heart. If you're wondering if man has a purpose, it's right there. You could just work backwards. The purpose in a man's heart, it means man has a purpose. It says the purpose in a man's heart is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. The word understanding is biblical speak, not for understanding textbooks or understanding culture or understanding theory. The word understanding in the scriptures means to be in relationship and get a revelation and understanding of God in your relationship to him. That's how you draw out the purpose like deep water in your life. I was created, you were created with purpose in mind. You know, there's something deep inside every single one of you that is your purpose in life. 
And God knows it. And he wants you to discover it as well. I was thinking about this week. I actually got sent this picture this week. I wanted to show everyone this picture. It's my high school photo from year 11, 11th grade. Can we put it up there? Look at that. Year 11, 1999. It's quite a lot of, a lot of kids. We had over 1,000 kids in our school. But go into the next picture and then go in again and go in again and there's me. Hey, handsome fella in the back there. I don't look real happy about having my picture taken there, do I? But if you could go out to the, the big picture of all the students right there, that's great. See, the reality is this. I could look at that picture and I could say, well, I don't think there's much difference between all of those kids up there. They all kind of look the same. All wearing the same uniform, all kind of have the same haircut, because we had to, those were the rules, otherwise you get the strap. <laughs> but it doesn't look like there's a lot of difference. But here's the thing about purpose, is purpose is often found in the design and the use. And as we go along in life, See, I didn't necessarily know the full extent of my purpose back then, but as I began to use what God has given me, as I began to step out and do the things that I felt like God had gifted me and called me to do, then my purpose, and my purpose is still being discovered to this day, the purpose is often found in the use and the design. I want to introduce you to your life, which is the great design of God that God has actually created every single person that whilst we might look from the outside looking in very similar, we're actually not similar at all. Every single person has a specific design, a specific purpose, a specific thing that God has called you to do. The design is the key to your purpose because it separates you from everybody else. It's kind of like my, uh, can I get that baseball glove right there? You know, when I was uh, probably like a few years ago now, I, I, I was looking at my two boys. I was looking at them, I was just like, man, they need to do some sport, you know. I, I did sport growing up. I did lots of, played rugby. I played the game they play in heaven, rugby, and, you know, all this sort of stuff. And I was looking at my boys, and I'm like, you know, they're not going to be able to play rugby. They're not going to be able to play cricket. So what are they going to do? Well, I thought, you know what, they need to play America's game. So I took them to the ball fields one day for tryouts or whatever, for the Little League tryouts. And I'll never forget being there. My boys were all prepped and ready, you know, their hair slicked back, ready for their first practice. And we go there. And I don't know if I'd messed up the timing of everything, but I got to the, the end of the line, basically. And they said, oh, there's no more teams left. The, 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 your boys, there's no, there's no room for, for them to be on a team. And I just was like so devastated. And then I said, but but surely there's something we can do. They said, well, there is something we can do. They said, you can coach. <laughs> and I looked at my sons, and I looked back at the person, and I said, you know what? I can coach. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. And for two years, two seasons, I faked it till I could make it. <laughs> every single practice, every single game, those poor kids have been taught things they should never have been taught. <laughs> I tell that story just because it's funny to look back on now. Now you'll be glad to know they have a good coach now and they're, <laughs> they're no longer under my coaching methods anymore. But I don't know why I'm telling you that story. It's got nothing to do with my message at all. But <laughs> This baseball glove could be used for a lot of different things. Actually, where's Eli? Eli, grab the other glove right there. See, this baseball glove, I could put it on my head. I could fill it with water. But the design of this, this glove is to catch baseballs. Fast.
Yeah, give me that glove. But you look at these two gloves, and they just look like two baseball gloves. But they're not two baseball gloves. Because as you begin to use them, you begin to discover there's actually a design in these two baseball gloves that makes them different. One's an infield glove, one's an outfield glove. And it's in the use of these gloves that you begin to discover that they were designed and created to, yes, kind of do the same thing, but specifically do different things. And you know, it's exactly the same thing with your life and my life. Is we can look at a picture like that of all those kids and see there's so many kids up there, they all kind of look the same, but God doesn't see it that way. Right. See, God looks at your life and he sees your life and he says, man, that, yeah, he's awesome. But then I've got this guy over here and they, yeah, on the outside, they kind of look the same, but this is the way God sees you and God sees me is that we're completely different. Right. And there's a design and a creation and a plan for your life that is different from every other person that has ever lived on the planet, ever. And that's why purpose is so important to understand. Because if we could get a revelation of God's purpose in our life, we would see how different we are for his glory in our lives. David had this revelation, almost greater than anybody else. Psalm 139 says, he says this. He says, my frame was not hidden from you. Look at this. When I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Here's what I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm appealing today to you to grab a hold of. Picture like a workshop somewhere, and inside that workshop, God's there. And God is intricately weaving and creating and working on and wiring up and positioning you to do exactly what you were called to do. That's how special your life is. That's how amazing your, that's how incredible our God is, is he takes every single human life and makes it different. So why am I telling you all this? I'm telling you this because you have a purpose. But you've got to believe you have a purpose. So number one, believe you have a purpose. Number two, you've got to head in the right direction. And this is where the rubber hits the road. This is where the, the design is discovered in the gifting that God has given you and me. See, my purpose is attached to my destiny, but the way I get to where I need to go is through the gifting that God has given me and the gifting that God has given you. See, God has given you something that you're just really good at. You ever seen someone in life and you watch them and you're just like, man, they're just really good at that? Well, let me say it a different way. It comes really natural to them. And what, what, what the enemy would love for us to do is to just downplay that and just be like, well, whatever, everyone's good at something. But that's exactly right. Everyone is good at something because God has designed you to be that way. And as you head in the right direction of your purpose, I believe as you discover what you're good at, that your purpose will come to the surface and you'll begin to understand what you were meant to do with your life. Proverbs 16 and verse 9 says, The heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. So when you go in the direction that is your purpose and your life, as you plan to go God's way, he will make it clear and establish your purpose as you move in the direction of your destiny. Psalm 138 verse 8 says, The Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Here's what the psalmist is saying. As I head... In the direction of my purpose, God will fulfill it in me. And I will get to my destination. But I want to take this a little bit further. So if purpose is what God has given me, if there's a purpose on my life that's unique and it's discovered in my gifting, what am I good at? What, what is my gifting? How do I know what it is that I'm good at? Here's the truth is that we all are good at something. And it's really, really important in the kingdom of God that you do what you are really, really good at. Because what you are really, really good at contributes to everything that God is doing and actually makes a difference in the world. What you are good at is often what God has given you, your gift, to be a blessing to the world. 
And that's part of your purpose. That's part of your meaning. That's what helps you get up every day. And when we discover our purpose, man, it makes everything so much better. And we find ourselves with that gifting. And our gifting usually fits into one of these seven categories. I got this from Romans chapter 12. It says in verse 4, for is, one, for is in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So we, though many, are one body in Christ. So we're all in this together, but individually members of one another. Look at verse 6. Having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. And he goes on. He says, let us use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, if, if one, it's one who teaches in his teaching, the one who exhorts in his exhortation, the one who contributes in generosity, the one who leads with zeal, the one who acts, who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. So let's break these down. Everyone fits into one of these seven categories. And I'll also say that as you grow in your faith and you walk with Jesus, you'll begin to exhibit all of these gifts but you'll have a tendency or a strength in one of them. Do you follow me? So the first one is uh, prophet, or I could call this motivator. This is the one that, I'm not talking about prophet as in, you know, getting a word from the, I'm talking about actually being able to speak. The, the, the word prophesied is to speak, to, to, to motivate. You know, I think as I've gone on in life, that what I've really discovered that God has given me as a purpose that's exhibited and, and expressed in my gifting is that I'm called to motivate people to God. To, to, to just get up here and tell you how much God loves you. But you might be in that category. You might be a person that has the gifting of a motivator. And that's what makes you tick. The next one, a servant. You're just really good at meeting the needs of people on a practical basis. This is something my wife is amazing at. Like you just, you, you sneeze and she's already sent a, a meal to your house. <laughs> She's so good at meeting the needs practically of people. I'm, I'm horrible at it. I'm just like, hey, if, you, if, you're, if you're about to die, call me, you know. But beyond that, I'm just like, I'm useless, you know. That's why we, we're so good together, I guess. But maybe you're a servant and, you, and you're really good at meeting the needs of people on a practical basis and that's your gifting. Um, the next one is you're a t maybe you're a teacher. This is someone who, who desires to study and present truth to people. And to help people understand it. This is why we need good teachers. It's because people, there are people out there with the gifting of the gift of teaching people, of helping people understand. I've met people like this, and they're just really, really good at teaching you stuff and making it plain in a way where you learn and you understand things and you grow in your understanding. This is a person, by the way, that literally have you met someone that read like 50 books a month? You know, it's just like, oh, yeah, I read a new book today, and tomorrow I'm starting a new one. I'm just like, how do you, uh, one book a year is like unachievable for me, and you've read 50 in one month. So that's the teacher. The next one is the encourager. This is the person that just will encourage you no matter what you're going through. Oh, I just lost my job. But it's okay. You're going to get through it. You know, you're going to find another job, and they're the ones that build you up. They're the person, they're just always the optimist. You ever met? I think I got a little bit of this. Uh, this is in me too. I just encourage people who are just like, always the optimist. The glass is always well over half full, you know? Everything's going to be fine. It's just like, my house burned down. It's okay. It was old anyway. You'll be fine. There's, a, there's another one for you. you. You'll be fine. But this is the encourager. Maybe you're in, we need encouragers in our life. If you don't have someone that's there to build you up, can I just encourage you, pray and ask for, for God to send you an encourager. And I pray also you'll find one in church. They're people that will encourage you no matter what. The next one, a giver. This is someone that knows how to meet the needs of people. By the way, all of these categories are all based around, in Romans 12, based around meeting the needs of people. Okay, so everything, we all contribute, we're all part of the body of Christ to help meet the needs of people. This is someone who knows how to meet the needs of people on a financial basis. Um, so maybe you're a giver. There are people that they just have the ability to be generous. And they're just generous all the time. It's the person that just, have you ever noticed there's always, um, you see the person who just knows how to fill the gap. Just knows how to step in and say, no, I can take care of that. Or, well, we got the resource for that. Maybe you're a giver. Here's the next one. A leader. This is a person that, that has that administrative gift, knows how to lead people through organization and, 
and, and structure and, 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 and helping, ha- helping an organization or a group of people be structured to get to the next level. And maybe you're, you've got that gifting on your life. You're just really good at lists. Where are all the list people out there? Where are you at? I, I love you guys. You guys are awesome. You make lists and you tick them off. And then the last one is the empathizer. So this is, again, discovering your purpose and seeing it through your gifting. You know, the empathizer is one that I believe we can all have. Because as you follow Christ, you move from sympathy to empathy. And what that means is, is that you no longer see how someone feels, but you begin to feel what they feel. And as you grow in Christ, that's something that God does in us. As He he grows our hearts in a way where we have the same sort of compassion, the Christ-like compassion that God wants all of us to have. But maybe you're an empathizer, someone that understands what people are going through, feels what they are feeling, and you're able to use your gifting to be that blessing. So there are just a few categories that maybe you could pray about. And maybe just as I was saying them, you're like, I know that's me. But I believe that we can all grow in those giftings as well. So when it comes to purpose, you've got to believe you have a purpose. Number two, you've got to head in the direction of your gifting. And number three, ultimately, you've got to give God the glory for your purpose. And this is where we'll land the plane this week. But the whole point of your purpose is not that you'll have a moment where you feel like, okay, God's put me up to get my medal for life and I've found my place and I've done my thing. It's never, it never ends with us. But what happens is when we discover our gifting, we realize who gave it to us and the purpose for which we were born, what happens is we begin to discover that God wants to open up my purpose to be a blessing for someone else. And as we do that, the one who gets the glory is not us, but God. And we see this time and time and time again in Scripture. Proverbs 19 and verse 21 says, Many are the plans in the mind of a man but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. I don't know, but I've gotten to a point in my life where I just want whatever I do to stand up for God. And when I make my plans and I commit them to Him, what happens is He begins to establish those steps in our lives, but ultimately it means that He gets the glory and we don't. Even those that work against God, We see in Scripture, God will use them for His glory. We saw it in in Exodus with Pharaoh. I already read that Scripture, but he says, but for this purpose, I have raised you up. And then he does it again with a king called Cyrus in Isaiah. We read about Cyrus also in Ezra. But he literally prophesies about a king that he will raise up that's not one of his people. And he literally raises him up so that God's purpose would be fulfilled. But look at what God does through Cyrus. It's Isaiah 44 and verse 28 says, Who says of Cyrus, he is my shepherd, and he shall fulfill all my purpose. Saying of Jerusalem, she shall be built, and of the temple, your foundation shall be laid. This is the point. If God will use Pharaoh for his purpose, if God will use a king from a foreign kingdom for his purpose, How much more will he use you? How much more will he take you who's decided, I want to be a Christian. I want to live for God. I want to live all of my days for Jesus. I want to go about my life doing whatever God wants. How much more will he use you as his own son and daughter through Jesus Christ to fulfill his purpose? Not just to us, not just in us, but through us. How awesome is it on a Sunday morning to think that that is our God? That not only has He given us purpose, but He wants to use it for His glory and for His name. Would you stand with me? I want to pray for the purposes of God in your life. Maybe you're in here today and you've never heard a message quite like this, where it's all about discovering your purpose and what God has for you. Maybe you're in here today and you've never heard a message like I was at 20 years of age that God actually had a purpose for me. And I want to pray for you that 
You're going to begin an amazing journey today of discovering that purpose, discovering that thing that God has created you for. And then as you do that, as you step into it, and you see God working in your gifting, you're going to get that confidence that only you can do what you have been born to do. But maybe you're in here today, and this is the burden I've got as well for people today. Maybe you're in here today, and there were dreams that you once dreamt a long time ago. But if you're honest today, you kind of covered them up in the the dirt of life, the stuff of life, you kind of covered them up and said, maybe God doesn't care about that. Maybe God doesn't want to fulfill that in my life and you kind of let it go. I'm believing today is going to be a great unearthing of people's purpose, a great unearthing of some of those dreams, those things that God laid on your heart a long time ago, that as you step into this journey you call purpose, that you're going to rediscover it all over again. So with every head bowed, eyes closed, just take a moment right now and ask the Holy Spirit to speak to you about your purpose, your purpose in life. Ask Him, say, God, what do you want me to do? What what, what do you want me to do with my life? What am I supposed to do with the gifts and the talents and the the things and the resources? that you? What is the purpose, Lord? And I believe through the power of the Holy Spirit, He'll make it clear and He's going to speak to us. But if you're in here today and you, you don't know what your purpose is, you're, you're kind of like on the, on the front end of this and you're just wondering, you're searching, you're asking those hard questions. Well, no one's looking around. Would you just lift up your hand? Just nice and high. Just like I thought, there's hands everywhere. You're saying, I, I, I want to discover, I want to know. I, I, want, I, want, to, I want God to show me. I, I, want to, I want to see it in my own life. Awesome. Holy Spirit, I thank you right now that you're here. And Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that you're speaking to your sons and your daughters right now. And God, I pray for those in here that long ago dreamt those dreams and had those visions. And God, I just pray that there would be a mighty unearthing today through the power of your spirit in our hearts. And you would bring those to the surface all over again. And we would rediscover our purpose, God that we wouldn't forget those things that you said to us and we wouldn't lose sight of those dreams that you gave us and God, that you would reignite those things in our lives. And Father, I pray right now for the people that are in here and asking those questions maybe for the very first time. What am I here for? What's my purpose, God, that you would speak powerfully today? In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I hope that message inspired and encouraged you. Well, before we finish, I would just love to ask you one question. The question is this. Have you ever said yes to Jesus? I'm not talking about knowing of Him. See, that's education. I'm talking about knowing Him personally. That's a relationship. Friend, I wonder if you've ever said yes to Jesus, opened up the doors of your heart, surrendered ownership of your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible tells us that if we believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord and we confess with our mouths that God raised Him from the dead, Romans says that we will be saved. I wonder if you've ever made that choice. I wonder if you've ever said yes to Him. I would love the honor and the privilege of leading you in a prayer right now, right where you're at, into a new life-giving relationship with Jesus Christ. It's as simple as praying this prayer. And if you're ready to make that choice, why don't you just pray this prayer right now with me? Say, Dear Jesus, thank you that you love me. Thank you that you died for me. And thank you that you rose again so that I could have life. Forgive me of my sins, of all the things I've done wrong. I make a choice today to follow you, Jesus, to be a child of God for the rest of my days. Amen. Amen. We are so excited. If you prayed that prayer, you're saved. We believe you're on your way to heaven. But what we'd love to do is give you a free gift from our church. It's a New Believers Bible. And if you pray that prayer, we would love for you to reach out to us at colonialchurch.life and we will send you this free gift of a new Bible to you. We are so excited as you take this first step in your new journey of faith. God bless you, church. And we'll see you next week.